Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Photo.com, and this is the Sony 50 millimeter 1.2. G Master lens. Now this is the lens that many other people said that Sony could never make because they have a really small tiny hole uh, that's called the E-mount. Well they said F you to everybody because this is a 51.2 G Master. Now before I get into the specs let me tell you what I went and photographed. I went over to a place called 1900 Ice Cream, Lieutenant Dan Ice Cream where I photographed the people at 1900 Ice Cream. So I went over to their factory to test out the 51.2 and I did use the Sony A1 to do the photos. The reason I did that is we're still testing this out for a full on review, plus it's 50 megapixels. I think it's perfect to use with this lens. Now Sony may recommend, or they actually said, hey, it would be nice if you would use the A7R4. And I was like, mm -hmm, I'm gonna use the A7R4. No, I won't. Uh, I just, I, I didn't. Now we've had this lens for about a week and that's why I was able to set up this one shoot and go out there and get it done. We're gonna go into those images a little later and you can download sample raw files at the link down below. But let's take a walk around the lens. You get a lens hood. And what's actually nice about the lens hood is it has this rubber on the end of it. Most lens hoods don't have that. So if you scuff this up, it's not gonna be as bad as scuffing up the, uh, the plastic. You have a 72 millimeter, is that what it is, Steven? 72 millimeter lens cap, which means you have a 72 millimeter filter thread. But you might be saying, Jared, what about the Nikon? What about the Canon? Well, the Nikon has an 82 millimeter filter thread and the Canon has a 77 millimeter filter thread. And I'm gonna put all three of those up here in just a second, but this is what this lens looks like. It's small, it's tiny, it's light, it's expensive, but it's comparable to the prices of the Canon and the Nikons, but it is a very nice lens to have in the bag. Why? Because it's so small. In fact, it's the same size and weight of Sony's 51.4. That's right, they made a 51.2 for the same size as the older 1.4 that they had. On the side of the lens, you have your manual to autofocus right there. You have a couple of different buttons that you could program and set. You have this on the side that says click on and click off. What that allows you to do is take your aperture ring and you could have it go smooth if you're shooting video or you could put the click on and you can have it click between apertures. Now, does it have an aperture lock? I'm a big fan of aperture rings that turn locking. It does not. But like with the 35 1.4, it gets in there pretty tight and it's gonna take a pretty good turn to get out of it. You're not gonna accidentally do it, though I kinda would like to see a lock anyway. Now in terms of weight, this weighs in at 778 grams or 1.72 pounds. Then we've got Canons, time to break that out. This one weighs in at 2.09 pounds and the Nikon clocks in at a hefty 2.4 pounds. It's also super large. Let me, let me take off this lens hood so you can see the difference in size. Look at the sizes of these things, guys. Smaller than the Canon, much smaller and lighter than the Nikon. It makes you question, why is Nikon's so large for a 51.2? And Canon was able to shrink theirs, and Sony was able to shrink it even further. So how many aperture blades are inside of these lenses? Well, the Nikon has nine, the Canon has 10, the Sony has, Steven? 11. 11, 11 aperture blades. And I don't care about the background bokeh, but when they did show a sample background bokeh, it kind of looked a little tighter than the other two. Now that we're done showcasing these two bad boys right here, we're gonna put them back down under, and I'm gonna get into showing you sample images. Remember, you can download the files, they're down below, well, the link is down below. So what did I photograph once again? I went to 1900 Ice Cream, it's a really good, the ice cream is really freaking good. Check them out at 1900icecream.com, I think is their website, or you can check 
check them out on Instagram. Let them know that the fro sent you. Now jumping into the first image, I went black and white on, on this one because I felt that a lot of this was photojournalistic. It just felt like me telling a photo story because this is the type of lens that I would have in my bag because it's small and it's a 1.2. It could go next to my 35 1.2 from Sigma, though, Sony, if you're listening, which I know you are, can you pass along a message? I'd like a 35 1.2. I'd consider an 85 1.2 as well. And while we're at it, can we get a 135? We already have it, 1.8. Don't do it, it's already amazing. Anyway, diving into this photo, I like the tones, I like the contrast. Everything feels good about it from what I was capturing. The biggest thing that you have to know about this lens is how fast the focus is. I wrote down here, fast, fast, fast AF. Not fast as f just fast AF. It is super fast and silent and you don't feel it. Now, why do I bring that up? Why? Because with the Nikon, you feel the focus and you hear the focus. With the Canon, you feel the focus and you hear the focus. Also with the Canon, it's not considered internal focusing because the end element, the, the element at the end, does move forward and backwards just a little bit, whereas the Sony does not do that. It's all self-contained. In the lens, you will find dual focusing groups. That's how it can focus much faster. It moves around. Even with the A1, they say you can shoot at 30 frames per second and still have focus tracking. Now, I dumbed it down to the medium for this photo right here of her coming out of the uh, Christopher Walken freezer. That's what it was. And I shot this one at the 15 frames per second because I don't need 20 frames a second when I'm in a photojournalistic situation like this. I don't want to just waste shots to waste shots. I snapped off a bunch of them. The focus tracking worked perfectly. It's silent, like I said. You can't feel it. You can't hear it. But it just works. It is super fast, and it's going to be great for video as well. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that Fro Pack 3 is officially live. We created 15 all-new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And guess what? They are currently Currently on sale, or if you'd like to buy the triple play bundle that has Fro Pack 1, 2, and 3, you can save a lot off of the full retail price. Now, stick around to the very end of this video to check out Fro Pack 3 in action. Moving on, I wanted to show you a color image. Now, there's not a lot of space to move around their facility right now. They're growing, they're getting bigger, they're gonna move to a bigger facility because everybody, 1900 Ice Cream is one of the coolest names ever. I love it. But move to this angle, I wanted to show everybody. And I'm shooting at 1.2. Some people out there may be like, why are you shooting at 1.2? The reason, because I can and I wanted to test it out to see how it worked, help isolate the subjects from the background, and to see how good the autofocus really is. And these guys are wearing masks, which makes it much harder. But we zoom in here, it found the focus, it did a great job in this particular situation, but there were a couple of situations with the masks that made it much more difficult to get the IAF or have the autofocus know where to look. When it was backlit, it was much harder. When it was side-lit or side-eyed, it was definitely much harder on the A1 to try and get the autofocus because it didn't know where to look. And that's just something we have to deal with when we are using masks. Uh, I already talked about this one where she's coming out of the Christopher Walken, but let's zoom in on it. You can see how nice and sharp her eyes are. We are at 1.2 at 1 320th of a second. Generally for the walking, I probably should have been a little faster, but it did a great job of nailing the focus here and tracking with her coming towards me. Next up, he was mopping, so I wanted to get a shot of him doing the mopping here, but he so happens to be at a distance. But what's awesome about this shot are all of the things that are out of focus in the foreground that draw us in to the main subject right in the middle, who even at 1.2 is super sharp. He's going through that lit area because he's closer to the windows than in some of the other areas where it was more shadowy. But I love that the focus went right to him as it should do because the Sony A1 is fantastic. The A7R4 is fantastic. The A7C is fantastic. And whatever Sony comes out with in the future should continue to be fantastic for autofocusing. But I just really like that image. And then this is where he got closer to me with the mop, just tracking the autofocus. I'm at one five hundredth of a second and I so happened to be off by two stops. I should have been at 250th, 
cut that in half, 1 one twenty fifth, around 1 one twenty fifth. but I was able to bring it back with the raw file, and all that matters is I got the shot that I wanted to get, even though my exposure was quite a bit off. Because in the shot before, you can see that he's in the sun, and then in this one, he's not so much in the sun. He was in more of a shadow area because there was no lighting. Next up, I wanted to test out the close focusing capability. And there was a bunch of the caps for the ice cream just sitting on the table. So I got close to it. You can get within like 11 inches, I believe, is your close focusing distance. You can get really, really close. You're gonna see some portraits right now that bring us in really close. That is Steven right there. Look how close I was able to get to him filling the frame to get this shot. We zoom in on his eyeball right here and he's nice and super duper sharp. Then Steven got to take a photograph of me and look at me. I look like me. The wind was blowing, but I am super duper sharp right there. Remember, as you zoom in on 50 megapixels, you might end up seeing some imperfections when you get into 200 and 300 percent. Now check out this portrait. This one was taken at 1 200th of a second at 1.2 at ISO 100. Look how super sweet that looks and how sharp it looks even through his glasses. Oh, and by the way, this was taken with the Nikon 51.2 and the Z7 version two with the new firmware. That worked out for this particular shot, but I will tell you when using the 51.2 on the Nikon side and their autofocus system, it was much more difficult to use than with the A1. But since I'm talking about the Z7 II, here's a couple of shots from it. We have her coming out of the, the uh, Christopher Walken once again, and this tracked really well. You'll notice on the screen, and I think it's important to show you the Nikon here, but you'll notice that the focus tracking, you can see that the IAF is lagging behind, but each one of these photos up until the last one was in focus. The last one was out of focus, um, and it just, it, it did a very good job on this particular shot. The next photo again is done with the, the 51.2, from Nikon. The interesting thing here is I put this one on the computer and showed Steven and he's like, is that with the Nikon? And the answer was, yeah. The Nikons have a look. The files just have a look straight out of camera. Now you can match that with the Sony's. It may take some tweaking with the raw file, but Nikon just has this awesome feel to it that I've personally always loved and hope to get back to one day, but not sure if I ever will. But for this type of shot, when I was trying to get the shot with the Z7 II and the 51 II, I couldn't tell where the autofocus was going because it had all the red boxes bouncing around. So it had more trouble trying to find the focus with the Nikon than it did with the Sony, but I just wanted to take a little side uh, track there because it's important to test out the Nikon in the same situation and see how they work. I'll put those raw files up for you, but when it hit, it really hit and it hit well. This one right here, the guy's working on the feeding machine that takes the hopper of ice cream and puts it down below. He hits a button and it goes and then it puts the ice cream in the perfect amount in the pint, and then he passes it on. I just liked it. I like to cut, look at, look, we zoom in all the way, and it looks fantastic here. I'm at 800 ISO, and the shots just look great. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this <laughs> edition I Shoot Raw shirt is currently up for pre-sale right now at store.fronosphoto.com. On the front, you have this awesome design, and on the back, I got kicked out of my own logo in exchange for this bird with a fro and a camera. Again, store.fronosphoto.com for the next couple of days while it's on pre-sale. Now let me show you where I had a little bit of an issue. It was with this photo right here. So if we look in, let's zoom in on his face. It had trouble because, well, one, he's wearing this thing that I'm wearing right here. I wore this because we don't want any fro hair in the ice cream unless it's my ice cream, in which you get one piece of fro hair in my ice cream when you purchase froze, froze nuts or something. It's chocolate salty M&Ms and salted caramel and a piece of hair. I don't think that will ever be made. But anyway, I gotta take this thing off. It's, it's, ah, it's bothering me. Take my glasses off take this off and back to the image. It had trouble. So I had him take this off and then there's his portrait. Now, this is a teachable moment because look at the exit sign behind his head. The next shot, no exit sign behind his head. I just moved myself. So always look out for those backgrounds. I think this shot looks great. Even shooting through those thick glasses, look at how sharp the roof, I mean, I'm, how far am I zoomed in? I have no idea, but I'm in all the way at one, two, and look at the reflection of the window and me in his eyes. It looks great. 
And the last two, just for fun, he was over by the machine putting in whatever he was putting into the machine, and I like this angle. Even at one, two, it found him, even with the mask on, uh, even with the hairnet on, it looks good. And this one looks nice as well. Oh, this is why I wanted this one. Let me show you this. We're zooming in. Look at his bracelet. It says 1900 ice cream. At least that's what I'm assuming it says. 1900 ice cream. We zoom all the way in there. We get that. That's what you get with 50 megapixels. But also, even at 1.2, it looks fantastic. So the moral of the story is that Sony surprised us with a 51.2. We didn't expect them to come out with a 1.2, but here it is. But what does it cost? Well, we were told it's going to be $2,000. Why? Because Nikon's is $2,100 and Canon's is a little more expensive at $2,300. There are still two tests available for this that we haven't run just yet. The first, sniff test. Oh, butterscotch. Mmm, butterscotch ice cream. Rump raisin. Rump raisin. That is a straight up callback back to City Slickers and Norm. Wind tunnel test. Wow, for such a light lens, it actually passed the wind tunnel test. So to wrap up this entire review, I have to say the size of this lens makes all of the difference in the world. The speed of the focus, the silence of the focus. Now I say the silence because when you compare it to the Canon and the Nikon, you actually notice a difference. You don't hear or feel anything when you are using this thing. It is a lightning fast, blazing lens. Who's it for? Any pro that shoots a wedding, any pro that, uh, any pro, to be honest with you. This is an unbelievable photojournalistic lens that I loved having in the situation that I used it in. Get us a 35-1-2, get us an 85-1-2. That will make me even happier. But this 51.2 is a fantastic option. And if you're looking to purchase it, please use one of our affiliate links down below because it helps us continue to make these videos. So if you'd like to text me what you think about it, my text number is over here on the screen somewhere. Give me a text, I may reply to you. But ask a question and you'll see what happens. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya. Jared Poland, Photo.com. And I'm proud to announce Fro Pack 3. This pack includes 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that are designed to help you edit your images quickly with unique looks. Now, let's see them in action. Introducing Gotham. Capone, Fifth Element, Mount Airy, November Rain, Almost Famous, Prestige Worldwide, Ecker, Winnebago, MDMA, Mentos, Zoolander, Canadian Tuxedo, Walter White, and King Contrast. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash fropack3 to check out the before and after images. And if you like them, you can pick up Fropack3 on sale for a limited amount of time right now, or you can save $60 instantly off the full retail price when you bundle Fropack 1, 2, and 3 together. Thank you very much for your continued support. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.